Hello everyone. In today's video, we'll be discussing the laws of access opening. Let's start. See, we know that access cavity preparation it is first and the most important phase of root canal treatment. A well-designed access preparation it is essential for the good endodontic success. This pyramid shows the pyramid of endodontic treatment where. Access cavity preparation shows the foundation of this pyramid. Like in other cases, for success of any treatment, the foundation has to be strong. So, for the success of endodontic treatment, our foundation, that is, access cavity preparation, has to be proper and accurate. Any improperly prepared access cavity, it can impair the instrumentation, disinfection, and therefore obturation, which can result in poor prognosis of the treatment krasner and ranko they gave you guidelines which help the dentist to obtain proper access opening and to locate the pulp chambers easily if we look at the laws they are the law of centrality law of concentricity law of cej law of symmetry law of orifice location law of color change try to understand these laws because many a time students get confused regarding these if you feel any doubt kindly let me know in the comment box so now let's start with our laws of access cavity preparation the first law is law of centrality what does this law say floor of the pulp chamber is always located in center of the tooth at the level of cemento enamel junction so if you look in these images what does this law mean the floor of the pulp chamber is located in the center of the tooth suppose this is the tooth so this floor of chamber is located in center of the tooth and another thing which this law says that floor of pulp chamber is located at the level of cemento enamel junction so this is the cervical line So the floor of pulp chamber is located at the level of cemento enamel junction. So from this point, we can say that this law helps us to decide till what place we can dig the tooth without causing any perforation. So from these two points, we conclude that the floor of the pulp chamber is located in the center of the tooth and at the level of CEJ. so basically this law helps us to decide the depth to which we can go without causing any perforation the second law is law of concentricity now what do you mean by this see two or more objects they are said to be concentric when they share the same center of axis in our case the one object will be the pulp chamber and the another concentric object will be the anatomy of the external tooth surface similarly in this image of cut tomato you can see that this is the inner surface of tomato showing the pulp of tomato and this is the outer anatomy of tomato which is almost similar to the inner anatomy so these are also concentric so after looking at these two images let's try to understand the law of concentricity the law of concentricity says that walls of the pulp chamber they are always concentric in our terms we can say that they are parallel to the external surface of the tooth at the level of cej so the same thing what i explained you just now the walls of the pulp chamber they are always concentric to the external surface of the tooth that means if these are the walls of the pulp chamber these are almost parallel to the external tooth surface similarly in this image we can say that this is the outer surface of the tooth and the walls of the pulp chamber they almost replicate the outer anatomy similarly in this image you can see that walls of pulp chamber they are concentric to the outer surface of the tooth and the floor of the pulp chamber this lies at level of cej this we have already seen so from this we can say that anatomy of the external tooth surface it reflects the anatomy of the pulp chamber 
i hope this law of concentricity is also clear to you third is the law of cej or law of cemento enamel junction what does it say the distance from the external to the surface of the clinical crown to the walls of the pulp chamber is same throughout the circumference of the tooth at the level of cej so if we draw this pulp chamber this law states that the distance from the external to the surface of the clinical crown to the walls of the pulp chamber it's the same throughout the circumference of the tooth similarly you can see here the distance from the external to the surface of the clinical crown to the walls of pulp chamber it is almost same throughout the circumference of the tooth and what is the level at the level of cemento enamel junction so if we summarize what we understood from these laws the law of centrality says the floor of the pulp chamber is always located in center of the tooth at the level of cej so basically the floor of pulp chamber is located in the center of the tooth and at the level of cej so this level helps us to decide till what depth we can drill without causing perforation and law of concentricity says that the pulp chamber is always concentric to the external surface of the tooth meaning that internal anatomy of the pulp chamber reflects the anatomy of external tooth surface as you can see from these images if this is the internal anatomy of the pulp chamber it reflects the external tooth surface so these three laws they are almost telling the same thing that is the internal anatomy of the pulp chamber it reflects the external tooth anatomy at the level of cej clear so i hope from this video the law of centrality law of concentricity and law of cej is clear to you i'll explain the other laws of excess cavity in next video thanks for watching stay tuned and kindly subscribe my channel for more such videos take care and goodbye